What is up guys? We're back with another video. And as you can see, I am in a new space here. And what better way to kick off videos in this space than with this right here, which is our brand new Intel Z890 test system. And of course you read the title of this video. We're gonna be taking a look at the brand new Intel Core Ultra 9 285K processor. So let's go ahead and take a look. Now to start things off, I wanna say that it's been quite a while since I've reviewed an Intel processor. We have to go all the way back to the 11th gen when I really did a deep dive on those processors. So it's been quite a while for me to really, you know, dive deep into the Intel architecture and everything like that. Of course, I have used newer Intel processors, but this review is really gonna focus on you know a couple older generations of intel processors and amd processors and really see if it's worth upgrading when it comes to intel's arrow lake s desktop processors they will initially be releasing five models across their core ultra 9 core ultra 7 and core ultra 5 series while the naming has changed with adding the ultra the series positioning remains the same, so Core Ultra 9 is going to be your high-end desktop processor. It's also worth noting that at least currently, Intel will not be offering a Core Ultra 9 285KF, which would come without integrated graphics. So at the top of the product stack, we have the chip that we're taking a look at today, which is the Core Ultra 9 285K. It's gonna fully max out the Arrow Lake S silicone, offering eight Lion Cove performance cores and 16 Skymont efficiency cores. It's also gonna feature 36 megabytes of L3 cache. Those eight P cores are gonna have a base clock of 3.7 gigahertz, and then they're gonna boost up to 5.5 gigahertz on their normal turbo boost. They'll boost up to 5.6 gigahertz on their turbo boost max. So that's across up to four cores. And then they'll finally boost up to 5.7 gigahertz across two cores. And that's their thermal velocity boost, which of course is based on temperatures. The E cores are gonna have a base clock of 3.2 gigahertz and will boost up to 4.6 gigahertz. Looking at price here, the MSRP for the Ultra 9 285K is gonna be $589. With these new processors comes a new socket, which is Intel's LGA1851. So in order to use one of these new chips, you'll need a new Intel Z890 motherboard. Z890 is gonna be the top spec chipset for this generation and is currently the only one available. But of course, in the future, you should expect more affordable chipsets to be released. When it comes to the Arrow Lake S SOC, you're gonna get 48 platform PCIe lanes from the CPU and chipset. The Gen 5 lanes have increased to 20, so you'll have 16 lanes for your graphics card and then four for your Gen 5 NVMe SSD. The CPU will also give you a set of Gen 4x4 lanes, which can be used for another M.2 slot or onboard devices like Thunderbolt 5. Talking about Thunderbolt, the processor has an integrated Thunderbolt 4 controller. So on all of these new Z890 motherboards, you're likely gonna see dual Type-C ports on the rear I.O. You're also gonna get 24 PCIe Gen 4 downstream lanes, which is an increase over Intel's Z790, 16 Gen 4, and eight Gen 3 lanes. When it comes to the DDR5 memory controller, it's gonna support up to 192 gigabytes of dual channel memory. This means up to 48 gigabytes per DIMM. Native JDEX support is DDR5-6400, well, Intel says the real sweet spot for overclocking memory is gonna be DDR5-8000. When it comes to testing, as I said, we're gonna be testing against some older processors, but I did try to make all of the test systems very much identical. So here's a full breakdown of all three of our test systems.
Well, this has been an interesting one. It's always great to check out brand new hardware, but this is sort of not what I expected from this generation, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. The real gist of things with this new series of processors is that you're gonna get great multi-core performance. It's gonna be highly efficient, which is gonna to lead to lower temperatures, but it is going to be lacking in gaming performance and it's likely not going to compete against AMD, especially once they release their X3D processor. Is that a bad thing? I don't know, because over the past couple of generations, we've had a lot of issues with Intel processors, especially when it comes to temperatures and efficiency. And I think they solved a lot of that with this generation of processors. The biggest thing for me is, you know, I had a lot of friends building new systems and it was like, you need at least a 360 millimeter AIO for a 14 or 13900K. And if you're doing any overclocking, you need something more than that. I mean, this past January at CES, almost every cooling company was showing off a 420 millimeter AIO. And we're like, are we really at this point where you need a full tower case to run a 14900K? And we kind of were there. Um, so I think this sort of step in this direction and, and Intel is not the only one doing it. AMD did it with their 9,000 series from what I've saw as well, really focusing on efficiency because, you know, for both AMD and Intel, they want these chips in the hands of a lot of people. And not everybody wants to build a full tower case with a 360 millimeter AIO that still overheats when you're playing games or encoding video or something like that. They just want a stable system that's going to do all of the tasks that they want. And unless you're an, an enthusiast, I think that's a good thing. Now, if you're an enthusiast, you're not that happy with this generation. I mean, my 1200K was getting better gaming results than this processor, which is doesn't sound great uh, considering that came out quite a long time ago. Um, but I have to say for most people, you're gonna be really happy. And again, Intel can't please everybody and enthusiasts and high-end gamers are just a sliver of who they want to serve and i think you know eventually we'll get a special edition of this processor which is fully maxed out and gives you everything that you want but for the mainstream this is going to be the greatest thing i mean at full load in our test it was 60 degrees celsius with this 360 millimeter aio that is the best i've seen in years for an intel processor um so I really like that. That means this is gonna get in the hands of more people because they're not afraid to run a processor when it comes to overheating. They're also not gonna to have to put out a ton of money for cooling for the higher end case that supports the high end cooling, all of that stuff. So I think it is a really good thing. And honestly, I like this direction that we're going just because it gets these high end parts in the hands of more people because it's just, it just makes more sense to a lot more people. But that is kind of where I stand when it comes to these processors. Definitely disappointed in the gaming results, but everything else is really good, especially from a more consumer standpoint. But let me know guys, let me know in the comments what you think, would you build a new system with these new processors? And of course, definitely if you have any questions about Z890, these new processors or anything like that, leave it in the comment section below. And if you did enjoy this video, I would really appreciate it if you hit the thumbs up and we'll see you guys in the next video.